Hello, and welcome to this video on using the new Band in a Box for Mac DAW plugin in Pro Tools. There's a new plugin included with Band in a Box for Mac that accesses all of the real tracks, real drums, and other content in Band in a Box, but can be used right inside your favorite DAW without the use of the main Band in a Box application. The plugin comes free with the purchase of Band in a Box and automatically installs when you install the main program. In this video, we're going to have a look at the various ways you can use this amazing plugin within Pro Tools. If you use a different DAW, we have other videos that demonstrate the Band in a Box plugin in Ableton Live, Reaper, Logic, GarageBand, and more. First, we'll look at an easy way to get started. And throughout the video, I'm going to try and use a variety of different Band in a Box styles, so you'll get a taste of the different genres, grooves, and tempos we cover. Whether you're into jazz, rock, country, R&B, or any musical styles you can think of, there's something in Band in a Box for you. Right now, we're listening to some great funk tracks playing in Pro Tools that we created with the plugin. Everything that you're hearing was created by the Band in a Box plugin, simply by typing in these chords, and you can enter any chords in any key. Then we picked this funk style and generated the tracks. I'm going to go back in time a little bit to show you just how we did it. We're going to start with a blank Pro Tools project. The Band in a Box plugin is an instrument plugin, so I'll go to Track, New, and create a new stereo instrument track and name it BIAB for Band in a Box. Now I'll click on the first box under inserts A through E and go to multi-channel plugin, instrument, Band in a Box DAW AAX plugin. This is the Band in a Box plugin. It's sizable, so I'll make it bigger. You can see that the chord chart is currently blank. And this area here is for the different instruments in the style, and will be blank until we load a style. Here's where you can pick a style. Here you can set various musical elements such as the key, time signature, tempo, etc. And there's a spot for a song title, and various menus we'll have a look at later. In order to get some tracks, we need to pick a style and enter some chords, but not necessarily in that order. So we'll enter a chord progression first. I'll do it in the key of A, and I'll start entering some chords. A7 at bar 1, and I'll leave that for 4 bars, then C7 sus at bar 5, and D7 at bar 7. I'll use a handy shortcut, K8, to copy the last 8 bars. I'll also add a part marker at bar 9 to outline the form of the song, and that means that the drums will play a fill in the bar right before the part marker. At bar 17, I'll add another part marker as well, but I'll click a second time to make it a B part marker, which means the drums and sometimes other instruments as well will change what they're playing at that part. And I'll enter B minor, then E minor at bar 19, B minor at bar 21 again, and then E7 at bar 23. I think that's good, but I'll make it end at bar 24. Change the ending chord to an A, change the choruses to 4, so this entire thing will repeat 4 times. Now we can select a style, either by clicking in the Select Style area, or by going to the Select menu and picking Select a Style. Here's a list of all the Band in a Box styles available. As you can see, there's over 6,000 to choose from. You can double click on any style in the list to hear a sample of what it sounds like. So for example, if I filter the list to show jazz styles, I can sample some of the jazz styles.
or some rock styles. or some country styles. I think a funk style would best suit the chords that I entered, so I'll sample some funk styles. And I like this fetching style. You'll notice that in this column, it shows the ideal tempo of the style, which for this one is 110 beats per minute. That does not mean you have to use it at that tempo, but if it's somewhat close to that, you'll get the best result. So I'll pick this fetching style. I'll make the tempo slightly faster than the sample we heard in the style picker. 114 beats per minute. And I'll set that in the DAW as well. When you first add the plugin, it takes the tempo of the DAW, but since we changed it in the plugin, we need to change it in the DAW as well. So now we're ready to generate the parts. There are some custom generation options in this menu, but right now, I want to just generate all the tracks normally, so I'll just press the top generate button. Now it's creating the tracks. You'll notice that there are some empty green squares and an empty blue square in this area. When the tracks are ready, those squares will be filled in. The generation takes a little bit of time, so we'll skip ahead in the video a bit. Now our tracks are finished, and these squares are filled in with waveform icons, meaning that they are ready to drag into the DAW. Before we do that, we can sample the tracks by pressing play up here. Next, we'll drag them into the DAW, which can be done individually or as a group. This is how you drag a single track. But I'll undo that. And this is how you import all of the tracks by dragging the blue icon. And now we have these tracks right in our DAW. During playback, the chord chart will highlight the current playing bar. This is a great tool if you want to record your own tracks over top of this. So you can now mix the tracks, add effects, or anything you like. And as with all real tracks and real drums, these are real instruments played by real musicians. These are not individually sampled notes, these are actual performances by some of the top studio musicians in the world, able to play over any chord progression in any key you enter. This particular style has a bass part by Alex Al, one of the most sought after bass players in LA. 
who played in Michael Jackson's band for over 10 years. He also played with the likes of Stevie Wonder, Sting, and many more. On guitar is Bob Lanzetti. Electric piano is covered by Jeff Lorber. And drums are played by Spot C. Wright. I'll do a few similar but quicker examples like this, with a few different styles, so you can get a sense of the scope of what you can do with the Band in a Box plugin. Here I am typing in some chords like I did before, but this time I'll pick a hard rock style. I'll set the tempo and generate the tracks. And I've got some great hard rock tracks in my project. I'll do the same thing again, typing in some chords, picking a bluegrass style, and generating the tracks. Then I'll drag them in when they're complete, and I've got some great bluegrass tracks in my project. In addition to typing in chords, you can open actual Band in a Box files. These can be files that you've created in the main Band in a Box app, files that other people have sent you, or even demos that come with Band in a Box. I'll open a Band in a Box song file that features a bluesy Americana style with a resonator guitar by Eddie Dunlap, who has backed up artists like Clay Walker, T-Bone Burnett, and Mo Pitney. So now we have the entire thing entered for us, the chord progression, the key, etc and the tracks are being generated automatically. So I'll just drag them in, and just like that, you have a great Americana style with Eddie Dunlap playing over the changes. And you can also save anything you enter here as a band in a box file as well. One more quick demo. I'll open another file. Let's check out the demo for a rumba style. The style in this song features the legendary Alex Acuna on drums, as well as the amazing Ramon Stagnero on guitar. I'll let it generate, drag the tracks in, and here it is playing. So now we will have a quick look at the preferences dialog within the plugin. Let's load up the plugin again and check out some of the settings within the plugin. At the top, we can choose our language if we have any of the international language patches installed. In the rendering section of the preferences, there are various options for your renders. For the master mix, you can choose to render a flat mix, a dry mix, and a center pan mix. On the right, you can choose options like normalizing, acidizing, and padding for multi-riffs. The multi-riff padding puts blank space on either side of the audio. You can also choose to allow multi-riffs to start early and end late. Notify when generations are complete, and auto-generate loaded songs instead of waiting for you to click generate. Clear renders will clear the audio files that are currently saved in the Band in a Box folder, which is Applications, Band in a Box, BB Plugin, Saved Tracks, and then subfolders within there. Below, we have our folder location preferences. This area allows you to specify Band in a Box program, real tracks, real drums, and saved tracks locations. Usually, you want to leave these as they are automatically set. There is likely no reason this would need to be changed but if they were pointing to an incorrect location, it would appear in red, and pressing the Find Folders button would set it correctly automatically. You can also set these locations manually by pressing the Select button. At the bottom of the Preferences, you'll find the DAW settings, where you can change the host DAW. This is also set automatically and should be correct already, but you can change it if it's wrong. 
You can also choose whether you would like bar highlighting in the chord sheet. Let's look a little closer at the features of the plugin with the Soul Pop project. To start with, it will be just like the other examples we saw earlier, but after the first tracks are made, I'll add a loop and a solo that will use the multi riff feature. So here I am typing a Soul Pop chord progression with jazzy chords like B flat major 7, C minor 7, F dominant, etc. And like before, now a loaded style. I know I want something around 100 beats per minute, so I'll use the tempo filter in the style picker. I also know I want something pop, so I'll use the category filter to show pop styles. I think I'll choose a style from one of my favorite piano players, Miles Black. So I'll use an artist filter and type his name in. Now I'll preview some of these styles. And I especially like this Robson style. So I'll choose that and generate the tracks. And as before, we'll drag from the blue squares to make multiple tracks in Pro Tools. Now let's listen to a bit of the song. Sounds pretty good. Let's add a modern pop flavor to this with a loop. I'll go to the select menu and choose the loop option. Then I'll find a pop loop that works well with the song. I will filter the loops with the search string pop and double click them to preview them. I really like this reminisce loop, so I'll load that one and I'll generate it alone. Once it's done generating, I'll drag it into my project. And that definitely adds a modern edge to my mix. I'll add some more excitement to my song by adding a jazz soul guitar solo. I could let Band in a Box generate a great solo by itself, but I want a little more control over it. So I'm going to use the multi riff feature to generate seven different tracks of the same guitar soloist. And I'll pick the part that I like best. I know that we have a great Brent Mason soul soloist that is around the same tempo as this song. So I'll select that real track from the real tracks picker. Before we proceed with the multi riff feature, let's take a moment to show you how the different tracks are laid out within the plugin. We now have tracks of various types loaded into the song. There are three main sections accessible with the scroll wheel. On the top, we have the style tracks, all of the tracks that are specifically loaded with the Robson style. Then in the middle, we have the special tracks, and we have that one special loop track. Individual real tracks real drums, etc. would also be here. And then at the bottom, we have the multi-riff section, which is what we just picked. Let's generate the multi-riffs now and drag them in.
Now we have seven instances of the same soloist playing different parts on separate tracks. If we tried to play them all together, it would sound pretty bad. But the idea is that we can now listen to them individually and either pick one that we like best or piece together different phrases from them if you want more control. For now, I'm going to listen to them all and select the one performance that I like best overall. And I think I like the first one best. So I'll delete the rest of them. Now let's listen to the whole thing. Thanks for watching this tutorial on using the Band in a Box DAW plugin with Pro Tools. Have fun!